Hey gamers, Foxfires here, and today I'm bringing you an update on ArcAge. A few days ago, information was released that ArcAge is coming out with ArcAge Unchained. And this has caused quite a stir in the community. I've had uh, tons of people email me, message me, and leave comments on some of my videos about Unchained and what do I think about Unchained and a reaction video and you know just different aspects about it and so I wanted to, to bring out this video to share with you my thoughts about Arcage Unchained, what it is and the kinds of things that might want to be careful about and essentially also my ideas about how you can win Arcage Unchained. Okay, so first off, what is Arcage Unchained? Um, because this information was just released a few days ago, you may not have heard much about it yet. So Unchained is what is being pitched as we've listened to the community. We've heard what you've had to say and we've listened. We are doing things about your thoughts. Okay, so what exactly does that mean? Essentially, they are releasing a server that's not based on a pay-to-win model, or at least, again, that's the pitch. Okay, so what does that exactly mean, um, a server that's not based on a pay-to-win model? So the idea is that this server is gonna have no Apex, and that things that you can buy for credits are just gonna be vanity items. So it's this idea uh, to address players concerns that have been you know really a, a talking point for a few years now this idea that in a lot of ways Arc Age is a pay-to-win game okay so when is this thing being released well uh, it's being released this fall so in just a, a month or two is the tentative release time that's expected and of course this coincides with about the timing for as you might notice as coming up in a couple of days the release of classic wow and so we'll talk about that um, a little bit at the end you know but here's the big question that's on everybody's mind and that is all right well this is being pitched as something that is getting away from that pay to win model is it is it really okay so my take on it is is that there are three things at the moment off the top of my head that I think could still make this server pay to win. And, and a couple of these have been touched on by others, um, but, but there's one really driving home that I think that nobody else I've seen talk about just yet. And again, part of that is just because this conversation is just now beginning. So I'll be really interested in hearing you guys' thoughts. But so, okay, let, let's touch on a couple of these uh, to begin with. Okay, so the first one, there's this idea of seasonal arc passes. So, okay, what is the seasonal arc pass? Um, really, it's a black box. The idea is that it's going to be some sort of pack uh, package that you purchase and who knows what's in it. They could put anything in it that they like. Now, again, with this idea that it's going to move away from a pay to win model, um, it's hypothetically just going to contain other vanity related items. But is it? Otherwise, you know, if there's no incentive for this arc pass, you know, why would you buy it? Now, there's been discussion that it might contain some credits, similar to how some of the Archeum packs of the past have contained credits. Um, and so, but regardless of whatever initially goes into these arc passes, these seasonal things, of course you can imagine that that might change over time. And so as that changes over time, this of course could end up containing pay to win items. Okay, so another aspect that could ultimately lead this to be another pay to win server is the fact that, okay, well, right now it's being pitched as a separate entity. You say, okay, well, how does that make it pay to win? Uh, initially, it doesn't. But so the idea is that there are going to be no character transfers. So you can't take, you know, one of these old legacy characters that you've been working on for years and bring it over on this new server. It's going to follow much like some of the other fresh start servers. You have to create a new account. You're going to be making all new characters and generating gold and items all from scratch. And so again, of course, that means that there's no item transfer here. But of course, the big catch is, is that is it's a separate entity um, for now. 
uh, if this indeed does end up following the model that the other fresh start servers have have done you know whether it's 12 months from now 18 months from now the idea is that those servers ultimately went through this auction house merging and so as soon as you join up auction houses of course what that means is that in fact you can start to move a lot of gold and a lot of items um, between these servers so while at least for now it may be a separate entity ultimately one of the things that could come into play here for pay to win is if and when ultimately the auction house for this server gets merged with other auction houses okay now let's talk about the big pay to win thing that's much more immediate in my mind so some of these things you know the arc passes maybe they won't ever put pay to win in it this idea about uh you know it being a separate entity maybe they won't merge it with other auction houses at least for a long time something much more immediate is this idea that this server again the idea of being pitched that it's going away from this pay to win model is it's a one-time payment to play so it's not a subscription model you're not going to be paying per month one-time payment that's it okay so what exactly is in this no subscription no monthly payments and then what that essentially means is that you've got permanent patron patron for everyone in, in the sense that there is no patron because everybody's always got it all the time on the server and so those benefits are things like permanently owning land and 5k labor points that regen all at the same rate okay now in theory that sounds great right i mean isn't this isn't this what everybody wanted go get away from a pay to win model let's let's go to a, a subscription based model or let's go to a one-time payment model but here here is the real kicker this this one-time payment model it is actually i think going to end up being the biggest pay to win aspect of it all so okay let's think about this how could because everybody does it. Every, how you play Arc Age is you think about how you can uh, abuse and exploit the system. How could you possibly turn this into pay to win? Well, exactly like so many aspects of the game have been previously used to go pay to win, and that is by doing multiple accounts. And this is actually where I have a bit of a disagreement and a difference of opinion compared to Paradox Gaming. So uh, he released his video a few days ago about Arc Age Unchained. I'm going to link it here in the description. Uh, please check it out. And one of the ideas that, that Paradox pitched was that, you know, Unchained is going to be fantastic because it's going to minimize the number of alt accounts. And I don't think that that's going to be the case at all. I think it's actually going to be quite the opposite. That as you move away from a pay to win model, this idea where you can't transfer characters or items or gold, how is it that you're going to get an advantage? Well, by having multiple accounts. Okay, how? Again, much like, you know, a lot of the history of Arc Age, there's this idea of owning land. You know, you could be a land baron that is going to just lock down a bunch of the land. Or if you've got a bunch of accounts, you've effectively got an infinite labor pool. Okay, now, and again, this is really key here because it's a one-time payment. This is no longer you need to buy labor stipends. This is no longer you need to maintain the upkeep on patron for those 10, 20 plus, who knows how many ever accounts. This is you buy it once, you've got permanent ability to buy land and you've got permanent, you know, 5K labor that regens like it's a patron, permanent patron labor based on a purchase of one time this is where it becomes pay to win. Because of course, the guy next door is gonna buy 10 accounts. Are you gonna buy 10 accounts? Because if you don't buy 10 accounts, he's gonna have an advantage on you. And you know how Arc Age works. If you have the advantage, you win, especially the longer the time that passes. Okay, so I know what you're saying. Like, say it isn't so. We really, we really want an Arc Age server that isn't pay to win. Please tell me that this isn't going to be the case. Tell me it's not going to be pay to win. How can we get around this idea of multiple accounts being used as an exploit to essentially pay your way to win by having infinite land and infinite labor points? 
there are a couple of ways that, that maybe they could get around this. And this would be if gold does not matter. And if labor points do not matter. If neither of those things matter in Arc Age anymore, then it won't matter how many accounts you have. But of course, the big catch is, is that, you know, while this is hard to predict 100%, Arc Age has, throughout its history, you know, always centered around having gold or needing labor in some form or other. So it's really hard to imagine that Arc Age Unchained is not going to give somebody an advantage by having more gold and having more labor. If it gives you an advantage, then pay to win is what we're looking at. The more accounts you buy, the more labor you get, the more gold you get, the better advantage you have. So my take on it, I know a lot of you have asked me this, my take on it is that yes, in fact, it is another cash grab. Um, so going back to this idea of the one-time payment, unofficially, and, and you know, this comes from Paradox, uh, unofficially, the idea is that this one-time payment is only going to be 20 euros. And I say only 20 euros, but when you compare that to the cost of patron, currently on the legacy servers on a monthly basis, that really adds up. Now, yes, you can do a lot of work on those different accounts in order to, to get patron for free, but at some point, usually for that patron account, they initially paid in the first month or two until they got that account in a place where it could sustain itself on a free kind of a basis, that it made enough gold in game to continue paying for its patron. Well, now, you know, this one or two month up front, it's just done by this one time payment. And again, that land is going to be forever. That labor is going to be forever. 20 euros? Yeah. People are going to be buying multiple accounts for sure. Okay, so when you look at the how was this going to be a sustainable business model, this idea of a server that's a one time payment, if they're not going to have subscriptions, if the cash shop is just going to be vanity items, where are they going to make their money? Well, of course they're gonna make their money then off the one-time payment. There's a reason it's set at 20 euros, not 60, not 100. That is, that is the finance department crunching the numbers and saying, okay, based on the number of people that we think are going to be buying multiple accounts, what is the right price point that we're gonna make the most profit? And somebody's done that at being 20 euros. Yes, of course, 20 euros, that sounds like a reasonable price. Of course I would buy multiple accounts. If it were 60, oof, maybe two. If it were 100, nah, almost certainly just the one. But at 20, oh, of course, of course I can get multiple accounts. Of course, yes. Okay, so one of the other points that I want to bring home is that this is not like classic WoW. This is not a return to the, to the good old days of Arc Age, the classic Arc Age. Um, you know, classic WoW is bringing in this nostalgia aspect and it's not pay to win. Um, you know, that's what we wanted out of Arc Age. We wanted a classic Arc Age that's not pay to win, but that's not what we got. So this new Arc Age Unchained server is going to have all the new content and all the new updates, just like the other servers. This is not a return to classic Arc Age. So what that means too is that, you know, if you liked classic Arc Age, you know, Arc Age before they botched the trade system several times over, Arc Age before they botched it in, you know, other ways that you may have really enjoyed playing the game that were changed. Um, you know, this is not going to be a fix if you were looking for that classic Arc Age, if you were looking for a return to the old trade system, etc. This Arc Age Unchained is not going to do that for you. You know, the other point to bring home too is that if you haven't played Arc Age in a while, um, the game has changed so much that you probably won't even recognize it. Uh, the trade system's completely changed, how you gear up has completely changed, everything is different. And of course, if you know anything about Arc Age, you know that knowledge is power. That's, that's the reason a lot of you really like to watch my videos, is, is I'll give sometimes, you know, these insights based on the upcoming patch notes, etc. And, and help people in how they can prepare, like how they can prepare for Unchained. Expect to buy multiple accounts and expect that to be the, 
way that people are going to exploit it in a pay to win kind of way, but it makes sense. I mean, of course it's a cash grab. This is the way that they can try to lure people back in and say, hey, you know, give us more money. Knowledge is power. And in this game, if you haven't played it in a while, then, you know, unfortunately you're not going to have that advantage. Okay, so then the last question that you guys have been asking is, you know, is Archage Unchained going to save the game? Can Unchained save Archage? And of course, you know, based on this video, you've probably already guessed my thoughts on this, is that it is too little and too late. So from the too late aspect, you know, they really should have tried to do something like Unchained after the first year or so. Once they kind of got a feel for how the game was going pay to win and, and the kinds of numbers of players that they were losing because of these different aspects, they really tried should have tried to do something like Classic and a non-pay to win straight off after that first year. As soon as they've had the dust settle even a little bit to figure out what's going on. You know, and at this point, you know it's too late because the players are gone. Um, and not just gone, but gone usually in a way that, that left a bad taste in players' mouths, that, you know, really made them angry. A lot of the server merges them losing all of their land. Um, you know, even right at the beginning, you know, the change to the Thunderstruck trees, that's always been a sore point for a lot of players. For me, it was the trade system. They kept changing the trade system over and over. And then they kept doing the server merges on top of that. So every time I'd finally get back my land, I'd just lose it all. And so I'm the kind of person that I played the sandbox. I really liked my land. I really liked doing very specific trade runs. And so I put in a ton of time and effort and gold into that. And then I would just lose it. And so that was the killer for me. Okay, and it's too little. Um, because again, the game has completely changed. This is not a classic. Um, server. It doesn't go back to any of those old trade systems, etc. Um, and so it it is really looking like it is going to be pay to win. I really hope I'm wrong. I'm really hoping that maybe gold won't matter, maybe labor points won't matter. I really struggle to figure out how it's going to be arc age if gold and labor points don't matter. I mean, if gold and labor points don't matter, it's not really arc age anymore. And so, you know, Imagining that gold and labor points are going to matter, multiple accounts are going to matter, the one-time payment of 20 euros each, that's where your pay-to-win is going to come in. You know, and I don't want to just poke holes at all of this. So the question is, is, is there a solution? What is the solution? And I know that it's, it's a hard question and it's got a really hard answer too, otherwise, you know, it's something that they could just implement. But so my proposed solution would be do classic Archage, go back to the old systems and, you know, how can you get around the need for multiple accounts that exploit that pay to win aspect of the exploitation there if you gave each account infinite labor? Now, of course, that's going to have interesting aspects in and of itself for gold generation. But the idea would be that if everybody's got infinite labor, then you don't need multiple accounts. And it would directly reflect the amount of time that you put into the game. The more time you put into the game, then obviously the more gold you can make and the further you're going to progress your character. But will that ever be implemented as a solution? I don't see how it can be. How would it, how would it work from a business model perspective? How could they make, how could they make money from that? And if they can't make money from that, then they're going to really, um, they're really going to struggle to to put that forward as an option, a classic infinite labor point kind of idea. You know, what are what are you guys' thoughts about what they could do to to fix our gauge? Um, would you like to see classic system, you know, kind of come back? Um, how do you think they can get around the pay to win aspect? Is there something else that they could do other than infinite labor? Is there something else that they could do that would work as a viable business model so that they could still make their money and that it would still be fair for all of the other players? I really would like to, to know you guys' thoughts. As always, thanks for watching gamers. I'm Fox Fires, and this has been an update on our game.